24 minutes past nine, the Dave Monk programme. Hello, thank you for being with me. Well, we're talking CRB checks this morning and uh, some great calls coming in on this, actually. Can we look at it from a slightly different angle? I mean, with, with Sue a few moments ago, we were saying, well, why does it take so long? And why can't you have your own personal portable CRB check um, that is updated. So instead of going from scratch each time, you have your portable CRB check that applies to you, and then you just update it each time, which should take less time. What happens, though, if y there is something in your past? You know, you've made a stupid mistake in your past. We all make mistakes of different levels of severity, and you just want to get your life back on track again. Well, Chris Stacey is from unlock morning chris morning dave can you just explain to me what unlock does absolutely uh, unlock is the national association of reformed offenders so we're an independent charity and crucially a, a membership organization set up uh, just over 10 years ago now uh, set up by reformed offenders and we're about trying to uh, allow reformed offenders to uh, get on with their lives and, and be successes in society and become sort of productive members of society after they've left crack Behind. Excellent, because the last thing we want people to do is because they're so fed up with society to turn back to crime again. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So what effect does CRB checks in their present form have on your members? Well, I think, firstly, we, we have a, a piece of legislation called the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act, which should allow uh, reformed offenders to move on with their lives. There's a number of criticisms with it. It doesn't include uh, many people in that uh, there's a threshold on uh, sentences for any sentence over two and a half years. But with CRB checks, uh, any position that's subject to a CRB check, of which uh, off the top of my head are roughly five, five million CRB checks uh, are done every year, all of those uh, checks don't abide by the Rehabilitation Offenders Act and they disclose all criminal convictions that somebody has at the moment. And so obviously when, a, when an employer receives that information, there's no legal limits on what they can do with that. So more often than not, uh, in 99% of the cases, they'll just refuse to employ somebody. Right, so that is what you have seen happening. Because, you know, I get a lot of jobs here from Job Centre Plus, and a lot of them require enhanced CRBs and so on, and they are working with vulnerable people, yes, fair enough, yeah. uh, within our society, and quite rightly so, that they should be checked out. Yes. But uh, say somebody committed a theft, uh, you know, a bad or robbery something many years ago, that would come up in the CRB check. Would they be allowed the job? Um, it's impossible for me to say, but my experience would say that they probably wouldn't be. The employer would probably take a negative um, opinion on that. And, and I think that the important point is exactly what you just picked up on, Dave, which is that depending on the type of offence, that's where um, a criminal record may actually stop somebody from taking a job. But it's depending on the, depending on the offence. And at the moment, uh, a criminal record CRB check, standard or enhanced, shows all criminal records that somebody has and that dumps that information on an employer who doesn't know how to react to that and in an adverse society that we're in will will take the safe approach and just not not recruit them so what what we need and this is something that the the government are looking at at the moment which we're trying to help them with is to try and look at what is disclosed on crb checks which positions should have what levels of checks to try and be a lot more proportionate in in the checks that we do because at the moment so many employers request crb checks a lot of them actually which are not even entitled to them but for those jobs that are legitimately entitled to them like you just uh, men mentioned um, we need to have a system that properly uh, looks at what criminal convictions should be disclosed so that, it, that there's, a, there's, a, there's a fair balance be between somebody applying for job and, and the need for safeguarding vulnerable groups. So in some cases it can make a bit of a mockery of the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act. Oh, it absolutely does, yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, say, for example, if you get a fine, uh, you would have to disclose that for five years uh, under the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act. But if you go for a job in any uh, situation, so say you have a fine for uh, littering, if you go for a job uh, in a school uh, 40 years later, that fine will, at the moment, be disclosed on your CRB check and Chris, that employer can, do, can refuse you the job. Do you mind if I bring Tony in here? Because Tony from Mulder's just given me a ring. Do you, and, and I'd like your comment on what Tony is going to say. Okay. Is that all right? No, so, Tony, morning. Hello, John. Hello, Dave. How are you? Yeah, fine. Tell me about your stepdaughter then. Well, she was a naughty girl about five years ago, and of course she lost her job, went to court, paid a fine, done all her dues, and anyway, she, she signed on and um, she had the odd one or two refusals and then she got a nice job she re outside work as a gardener because uh, she she loves the outside as well 
and she had all the school, uh, the classes all help her design a garden and they were halfway through that. Um, the school knew about her criminal record, the doll office knew about it and two months down the line she lost her job over it. What, because the CRB check yeah, then came through? Yeah, it came back to them, but it was all written on paper that she had a record and all that, and she been, she's had one or two jobs. She, like, worked last night up a pub through an agency. Mm. And, but uh, but she lost this job that she really wanted? Day. Pardon? She lost the job she really wanted, you say, because of the CRB check? Yep, yeah. Uh, Chris? Well, I think in, in, in uh, Tony's stepdaughter's case, obviously her conviction should actually now be spent under the Rehabilitation Offenders Act. So that, that proves the point, which is that uh, you've got to question whether that job as a, as a gardener, I think even if, even if it's in a school, is, is, that, is that job actually in a position where an enhanced CRB check should be needed? Mm. And then there's a separate question, which is, even where it is needed, in this case, it sounds like she's disclosed it anyway to yeah, the employer exactly, and yeah. they offered her the job. So one has to then question the school's approach to how they how they dealt with that. Unfortunately, people in, in, in Tony's stepdaughter's case have very little employment rights that they can actually enforce to say they should have actually employed them and should continue, but the, the, the school's process is, uh, sounds very questionable to me. Chris, f finally and briefly, Tony, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Really added to our conversation. Um, finally and briefly, Chris, what do you want to see happen without making it even more complicated? We want a, a simplified uh, Rehabilitation Offenders Act. It's very confusing, even that act at the moment. And we want CRB checks to be done in, in situations where they're absolutely needed. But for jobs that don't require CRB checks, they should do a basic level check along the lines of the Rehabilitation Offenders Act so that employers can get access to a proportionate level of criminal conviction information. All right, Chris Stacey from Unlock. Thank you very much indeed.